Welcome to the Church Collective Podcast. In this episode, I had the opportunity to talk to Josh and Nate from Elevation Rhythm about their sophomore album, This Is the Gospel. And if you have been paying attention to social media at all, you have seen that, man, the music that they are putting out has really been resonating with people. So I think you're going to be very encouraged by this episode. So here we go. Obviously coming off of growing pains where we kind of went with that coming out of COVID and quarantine and we kind of knew where our kids were and what they were struggling with. And so we kind of wrote songs that are more addressed towards those feelings and what they were going through and trying to apply truth to that. But for this album, we wanted to start with truth and like it'd be a truth centered album and yeah. kind of um, what's important is like our, everyone talks about how they like, yo, we're the voice of the next generation and all those things. But like, that's a very like big responsibility. And we had to really ask ourselves, well, what are we teaching? Yeah. Uh, what are we teaching these youth? And as they're building their foundation of faith, um, what, how are we putting, helping them put language to that foundation? And, and so we just knew our next album, we wanted it to be, we didn't want to write another song that didn't, uh, didn't address like what we believe, who we believe in, like all those very important core elements of who rhythm is. And so that's what this album was. Yeah. Very cool. How did you, um, I mean, what did, what did you go to? Like, what were the things, I mean, obviously we're going to go to the Bible, right? But like, how, how did you determine you know, in seven songs, like how, how do you cover the whole scope of systematic theology or whatever, whatever you would choose? Like, how, how did you go about that? Yeah. And so that was the, that was the tough part because we didn't, the album is not in like totality. Like, oh, this is the yeah, right. like, like the whole thing. Right? The book ever again. <laughs> just listen to this album. No, I don't think that's what it was. I think it was, what are the sparks? Like, what are ways that we can spark? Um, on one, how we can we address some of the simple things like salvation, uh, yeah. uh, baptism and purify or like um, this is the gospel just telling the story and talking about how how Jesus dying on the cross was for for me and you and so this the song this is the gospel was that was kind of like that go to and so we're kind of hitting on a couple of pillars yeah. uh, and almost like when you're writing it the only song like Street Lights was the one that was a little bit more coming a little bit more tension because mm -hmm. I think that we one thing rhythm we like to do is kind of like write songs that, like I said, like address that tension that uh, people go through. There's not just always, everyone's not just on the Sunday morning vibe every right. day. Though having a song that really, it's almost like a modern day particle sun where it's like, is that that feeling of like, man, I need to come home. Like I need to get back to, uh, to the father. And so that kind of was in the middle of the album on purpose to kind of like, to almost like tell like, Hey, we know like on this journey, you want to have those moments where like, you're going to have to like come back. Yeah. That's great. I'd love to hear, like you, you said too, there's like this weight of like, well, we're the, this is the next generation and they're going to bring whatever it is. Um, but a lot of times it feels like regardless of generation, it's just people trying to get their head around God. Um, I'd love to hear just like, what, what is that tension like at your, at elevation? Like what, are there big issues that you're finding in young people that you're maybe not seeing in older people or what, what, what's the tension there? Yeah, I think, I think if anything holds significance, um, it's because it was revealed to us first. Hmm. Um, none of these songs are from a place that we haven't been. And so I feel like the Lord, because we have said yes to him in such a unique space, specifically regarding the youth has, um, and spending time with our young people at church has given us insight as to like, okay, we're the next, if this is the generation's, you know, sound, the next generation soundtrack of faith, like we're at tables with them trying to understand what their language is as well. Um, so that the tension of that is like, it is honestly resolved by two things. It's like real revelation from the Lord. Um, because if you go to the Lord, you'll find his heart for his people. Um, specifically the people that we feel so assigned to, which are young people. And then two, it's actually going with that information to them and sitting at the table and being like, Hey, what do you think about this? What do you feel like? How would you describe this? Describe to me your emotions regarding this, that, and the third. Um, and so our, our church does a very incredible job of while we do release such music on a, on a big space, it's coming from little spaces. Like once every month, you know, we have these rhythm nights. And so that's where we get to sit at, at the table with our young people and really eat and dine and talk. And, and that's where these things are birthed out of. And I think that it lightens the lightens the pressure on us because we realize it is at the end of the day it's revelation yeah we get to put in song form sure 
I know like when, when we talked with you guys on the podcast, maybe about a year ago, we talked about how rhythm nights look, but for those that may not have listened to that, and it's probably evolved over this year, but like, maybe just give us a picture on like, what, what do those rhythm nights look like now? I mean, they're still wild. I think, I think um, <laughs> it's really, it's really beautiful to see how, uh, specifically with the music, the young kids are connecting and we're watching them grow up and watching them also be able to sing the songs in different seasons of their lives. Yeah. Um, cause we can have personal connections with them. So rhythm nights are still crazy yet, like really, really beautiful and can be really simple. I mean, just yesterday we had one Oh, it was, and it was wild. I mean, it, pastor Tim at, like gave a sermon and it wasn't your typical youth sermon. It wasn't fast paced. It wasn't, um, a lot. He sat down on the edge of the, on the edge of the stage and literally just presented the gospel as simple yeah. and plainly as it is and flooded and people flooded the altar young kids gave their life to Christ so every rhythm night is something different um which is what we what we want it to be we feel like that's what the Lord also has planned on our church is that like there's always something new there's so much more to him so why settle and so rhythm nights still look like that we're just trying not like it's almost like try not to wait until summer camp to have yeah. like that youth revival energy yeah I okay. think we wait, we wait for those summer moments where it's just like that's the that's like the big thing but I think uh, yesterday uh, we had rhythm night yesterday, but it was, it was, it was about salvation. Like it was literally like, and it was like that big altar call moment that you usually see at like big summer camps. But we had it on a Wednesday night, and I think that that was special. That we're not like yeah. we're not waiting until like some big conference. Like we're really trying to bring revival in our, in the opportunities that we get with our church every month. Yeah, that's killer. I can hear the youth pastors listening to this saying, "I." I that's their life. Like coming back from summer camp and trying to hold on to that summer camp vibe lasts for like a week and then it goes away. Um, what, what does the planning like look like? Like what's your team look like? Like how do you, you know, tangibly, what would you t- tell this youth pastor that wants to hold on to it? Like what, what can they do to try to keep that energy going? Yeah, I think it's, it's really about our, our curriculum is where we start. Um, our curriculum or what we take our youth through in our groups and stuff is the first one at the beginning of the year was called Back to the Basics. And then this one's called This is the Gospel. And so we've we've almost connected the songs that we sing to the curriculum that our youth go through and their e groups and then what our uh what our uh sermons are about on rhythm rights. And so it's really about the consistency in the and what we do is like it's not about like something feeling different than the other thing. It's just yeah. like we there's a they're like people are leaving Phil, but they're also leaving like hungry for more. And yeah. so it was like this the tension is so like we try to just we we buy them in, like try to get them bought into the to the marathon of this whole thing and not like a you can leave being like, all right, well, you can never come back. Like I know I think there's something about like people like they want to come back because yeah. there's so much there's so much teaching, there's so much learning, there's so much more yearning to go into uh what we're what we're teaching them. Yeah. And I would yeah. say that if you're in youth ministry know that like 90% of what you're going to do is sow seeds. Hmm. Um, and so for the youth pastor out there that maybe is, you know, even now these rhythm nights, that this wasn't always the case for the church. Sure. Like this might be the season that we're in right now, but we're seeing the, the we're harvesting seeds that were sown way before any of us got here. Um, and I think all of us are, are, are even on an individual level, our products of, at some point, someone grabbed us when we were a kid and when we were like a young, a, a young person and preach the gospel to us. And just now, I mean, years later, you're watching it, but it started there. And so, yeah. um, and, and so 100% continue to sow seeds, you know, and, and be okay with like, if I never see the reward, like my reward is Christ. He yeah. is mine and I is, and it's an honor to preach about this gospel. Even if I might not see this kid for the next seven years, he might not come back or he might be annoying, he might be a twerp in the back, but give it eight years and he might be the next Billy Graham. <laughs> Right, you know, that's very, very true so, for you. So continue, yeah. to, continue to sow the seed from Torp to Billy. That's what you named it. Torp to Billy. <laughs> Torp, that's the, the name of the episode. That's great. Where's that? Your <laughs> <It's Torps. laughs> What um, it, it, like I I asked the question because it feels like we all asked the question, but like what did what did we think young people want? Like I'm even thinking like there's Asbury was like a whole thing for a little while. Now we kind of don't talk about it. And now like I just like you guys living in the trenches with young people. Like what do you think they're what do you think they want their church to be maybe 10 years from now? What do you think their church is going to look like? Like what, what are you guys seeing? I think we're in a very different space than we were when I was growing up. When I was growing up, we wanted um, church to be relatable. Hmm. We wanted 
the hype that church never had. We wanted the excitement that church never had. And I think now everything is exciting and young people want the real thing, even if it's presented in the most simple way, mm. which is why we have moments like last night where the sermon wasn't crazy. There wasn't a nuts, like some out of the box um, illustration. Yeah, It was the first time someone probably sat down with them and just talked to them um, and was honest with them. They want some, they want something that is tangible. They want something that is presence filled. They want something that's different than anything else, you know? And we live in a world where like, yes, we should be relatable. Yes, we should do everything excellently unto the Lord. And yes, we still do creative stuff. We do that all the time. Sure. But even that is coming from a, like, it needs to come from a healthy place. You can't just do things um, because you think that's what they want. What they want is the real thing. And you start there. They want someone that actually won't be afraid. It teaches them to not be ashamed of the gospel because in this world where you can't really, you might not be able to say anything. Um, they want someone that's actually going to stand up for what they believe in. They want the real thing. And I think that's why Asbury, um, even even looking at where it's at in the Bible Belt, which is where the majority of Christians live in the USA, yeah. like that is the complete opposite of everything that we've seen the Western church try to be within the last 10 years. Yeah, It was a really old wooden chapel. Um, and not saying that everything has to be that way, but it goes to show that's that purity is what got us back. Because sometimes, I mean, it's the Mary and Martha thing. It's like, yeah, we can be really good Marthas, but at the end of the day, Mary chose the greater portion and just sitting at their feet, you know, at, at Jesus' feet. So I think they want the real thing. They want adoration. They want something that's going to last. Everything is so quick in this right. world. Everything will be gone and built overnight and then will fall overnight. Um, and you can tell when even leaders are leading from a place where they're like, you're just feeding me what I want. You're not necessarily giving me the bread of God. Yeah. And so they want, they want the real thing. For the first time in a long time, it's a young generation that's not hungry for antics or games. Sure. They just want something real. They don't want entertainment. Yeah. No, that's deep. Hopefully that's uh, resonating with somebody listening in, trying to figure out, because I know that's the, the, you know, coming from a guy who spent 20 years in worship ministry as well, doing all the attractional things, you know? Um, and that's kind of like the, even now, like my default is often like, well, that's how do we figure out how to do the, the cool thing? Um, when oh, yeah. it is literally just the gospel and, and people respond to that. Yeah. But I mean, where we, we all do it. We all, and, and there's yeah. a time and a place for it, right? Sure. There's yeah. A time and a place for it. But yeah. like you said, it, the days are over of that being the default. Right. And there was a season where that was actually like, where it, it rightfully was the default because People just weren't, I mean, they wouldn't come to church, right? And so even so many ch churches post-COVID, it's like, how do we get people back? How do we get people back? Right. And I think that we're learning that a successful ministry, specifically youth ministry, might not be necessarily about retention, mm. but it might be walking out Monday through Saturday with people. And then when they get to the house of God, they're going to be in a place of, in a house of worship, they're going to be in a place of receiving um, what we know is the real thing. And so it's it's a different thing. And there's always adjustments, you know, re realignings that happen in the body of Christ, especially in different areas and different cultures. I think we're in one right now and we feel the tension of it, but there's glory and salvation on the other side of it, man. Yeah, no, that's incredible. Uh, to, to keep going down this line a little bit, you talked about like living Monday through Saturday. What does like discipleship look like for you guys? Because that's a big piece too, is it's not about just that you know, just the rhythm night, like that's not the end all, yeah. but like, what's it look like for a relationship with your, your students? The Bible says in the verse that Jesus went to Capernaum and as he was there, he, the longer he was there, he grew compassion for the people. Mm. Um, I think specifically one of our team members that's really good at this is Bella. Um, Bella is, she sings, you'll be saved. And with the same enthusiasm that you see Bella leading from the stage, you won't see Bella in the office one day and you'll be like, what is she doing? And she'll, you'll check her Instagram and she's sitting down with like a group of like 10, 14 year olds that are like, she's really, she's really doing it. And like, yeah. even, she's even, and Josh has been incredible at taking the initiative to put people like me and Bella in charge of like, I, I help out with the young adult side of things. And I gather with young people, um, when I'm in town, we'll get everyone together. And I think that discipleship looks like everything outside of Sunday. I think the body of Christ gets together on Sunday to obviously adore him and then receive encouragement for what we do Monday through Sunday. It's almost a sending out like the upper room, the very first church service was a sending out. And then from that, the discipleship looked like it's simple stuff like eating together, like literally hanging out and learning how to love each other and grow love for each other. I think that with youth, that's so important. Um, 
you have to like meet them where they're at and be okay with that and not do it from a place of pity, but right. actually grow compassion for the people that you're with by staying with them long. And we don't know how to do that. We don't know how to sit with people anymore. Mm. Um, so discipleship is, 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 is so vital and it, it requires wisdom. It requires sacrifice of self. It requires to swallow your pride yeah. and like, even especially cause you're going to hear some really ugly stuff. Right. <laughs> right. You can't, you can't expect to, this to be like a, a nice little e-group and, 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 and then like just, you know, sugarcoat stuff. This is no, people are dealing with real stuff, especially these young kids. They're dealing with issues that we didn't deal with until we were in our twenties right. at 16, 17, cause they have access to so much. Um, so, so being real with where they're at and real with where we're at is so huge and, and gathering. There's so much power in just being around, being present for each other, even on a, on a team level, you know, that's we're on tour right now and it'd be easy to rip each other's faces off. We've been living on a bus for two and a half months together. Right. But I'm still respectfully, I'm still not tired of Josh. <laughs> that's awesome. That's and and that's rare. <laughs> right. That's rare. Yeah. That's, and, but it's because I know him and I love him. Yeah. And, and and it's a it's a blessing to be able to do that. Discipleship is so is so important. Um and it, it feels like it's a lost art, but there's hope because we're learning how to sit at the table of the Lord again with each other. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So to come back to the album a little bit, I'd love to hear just kind of maybe a little bit of the recording producing process. How did you guys you know, we've got a lot of people on our audience that are like super into that. <laughs> Your point oh, yeah. to this, I know. This is Josh's thing. So maybe just give, I know that there's going to be people listening for like some of Josh's like, you know, genius here. So maybe give any, any, any fun little stories or little parts that like really cool things that came that are like, that were part of putting this together. Yeah. Well, we started writing it last year, like in June, I think of last year, like probably right after we did our last interview, we started writing our next album. Yeah. But, um, on the production side, we, I knew I wanted this to be a live album because our last album was mostly a uh, studio yeah. and I, there was just like an energy that I just kind of wanted to, the sonic, I kind of wanted to play with. And so, um, us doing two drums was probably the, the biggest thing in a choir. I was like, I knew I wanted two drums and I knew I wanted a choir. And, yeah. Um, we like built this whole set for, um, like, our top so we have two drums tony and otis and they both can play like the kit and i'm like well i need someone to play the kit but like standing up <laughs> yeah so, so like i built like a standing version of like a drum set and it was honestly like, awesome. a kick drum a kick drum that was turned upside down and then, like a bunch of like like lower toms and we spent days just on drums like <laughs> i we probably spent three days just working on drums on this album and i love it and i think people can hear it on the album that oh for sure very intentional um, and they play, they play off each other really like, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then we went to one of our local colleges and then we got with the gospel choir. Um, and then we, we just spent time with them. I had all the choir samples. Like I kind of knew what I had, you can probably use like keyboard patches and like little fake choir. So yeah. like, I kind of knew what I wanted the choirs to do. And then we had like a rehearsal and we taught it to them. They came in the day of, and we, um, we recorded them and it was just, it was being able to like use different color. I know I probably talked about this last time, but like using different colors. Yeah. Uh, and I, I like to choose the colors before I even like know what I want to do with them yet. And like, I don't know how this is going to work, but I know I want these drums. I know I want this choir. I know I want this. And then yeah. it's literally just a, it's like a challenge. Just I look at creating an album as like a, as a fun challenge. It's like, I, this doesn't make sense yet, but if I can get this to make sense, this will be great. Right. And oh, that's so, awesome. Uh, yeah, so we did the live recording in this little room in the back of our office. We didn't go to one of our church, one of our campuses. We have this room, like a meeting room in our, in our uh, elevation offices, and it's not meant for a live recording. <laughs> yeah. And I literally just told them, I was like, hey, I want to do my live recording in here. And they're like, well, you can't. That's not, a, <laughs> that's not a music video. And I was like, oh, well, we'll figure it out. And so we like brought in a sound system. We hyped and draped everything. And like, yeah recording this maybe like 110 people were in there it was hot yeah but uh he packed everybody in this little wind and we did the album that night and we probably did more songs than what ended up on the album but yeah, yeah that was a, that was the bulk of it and then like i said street lights came later on i just kind of found that song in the middle of a writing session but yeah recording that album was probably it was fun because i've never done a live recording like a true live recording album before so that was my this is my first Oh wow! Like what album I've ever produced? Yeah, what a 
I mean, it was high quality for your first one for sure. <laughs> so congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I, uh, I'm a part of the, uh, belonging co college, um, here. And so a bunch of our students, like before our chap chapels, every Tuesday, we'll play praises without oh. fail, like every, like that's just like, and they're just bopping and they're running with it. And I would be, I would be remiss to not ask about that baseline that everybody's sharing and like students are trying to get, yeah, like, where, where did that come from? <laughs> like, just, I, it, it's almost one of those things. This is what I love our band. Like that was actually in the track that was the demo track. And, but it was kind of like hidden. Yeah. Nick was able, our bass player, Nick was able like to pick it out and said, and like I, our band always does this thing where they'll listen to a, a beat we made and be like, I want to play that. I want to play that. Take that out. The I want to play that part. I want to play that part. And I think, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure David, one of the producers on that song, I think he had that part in there already. Yeah. And Nick just kind of like pulled it out and made it come from this like background idea and like brought it to the forefront and yeah. like made it a bass lick that like, it's almost like a staple in the song, but sure. it's, it's, sure. it's just having a band that has, they don't hear our production. Like when I make a song, cause we, most of our writing stuff, like I usually make the track and it's pretty fleshed out before it gets to the band and yeah. a band doesn't just jam on top of a beat. And that's like, yeah. That's one thing that we don't do. Like, we don't just like, oh, this song's already done, so let's just jam on top of it. They yeah. figure out how to pull. They listen for things. They pull yeah. things out. They'll probably tell me, hey, let's, I'll replace this sound, or I'll add that. I'll double this sound. And like, they really infuse their instruments and the instrumentation into the track. And that's what I think uh, has been game changing for us. Yeah, that's killer. How do you... Um... I mean, I mean did, did, did it come like that? How did you foster that attitude in that team? Because I now there's going to be the worship leader listening to me. Like, I'm lucky if my team even plays what they hear on the track. But, like, how, how on earth did you get them to get your team to this place? I think it's, I think it was a little bit of both. I think they, they, they kind of understood that, okay, this isn't really worship music. And so it's not going to be like a four chord jam session yeah. type of song. Yeah. And so there's, there's a lot of, and then they'll get Tony, the percussionist, he kind of got mad at me a couple of times because I was making him play things that he didn't. He was like, I don't know if that's physical po physically possible. <laughs> but Because I, I would see an instrument and I would see all the possibilities that the instrument can do. And I think that's what the that's what we started to do is that it was a back and forth between it's like, okay, what can your guitar actually do? Can it make a, uh, can your guitar sound like a organ? Can your... Mm. Like and it was like that kind of and then exploring their own instruments made them feel more creative in the process rather than it being like, hey, I just need your standard clean tone or right. this, or I just need like a standard root note bass playing. And so it's like I think it comes from you helping them as a leader or a producer or as an MD, letting them know that their instrument and what they have is more than just like oh, like, which like like let's actually chase what this instrument can do. Yeah, and how can that benefit the song? That's great. What, so you, these guys have been on tour for a couple months. Like, what are you, what, any fun stories from that? Any, like, what are you seeing just while you're out so much? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, I think every yeah. week is a different story. Like, last yeah. week, Dallas was like such a refreshing week for the team um, because we got to see so many friends and make so many memories together. And then, but if you were in San Antonio, we talk about how like San Antonio was such an impactful show because it was the first show that we, did after the album released and we were singing um up until then songs that were technically unreleased mm. like we would we put praises in the set we put this the gospel in the set and then just it was only like a, a week or so after the album release and when praises started everyone knew it already yeah that's and it this is the gospel was going everyone knew it we we're like whoa like sometimes you forget because we're such a close-knit family and we're in charlotte and we're cooking and we're grinding we forget that these are more than just dropbox files like mm. people actually hear these and people actually meet God through them. Yeah. And so it's been such an encouragement and so humbling. Like, I think the, all the stories, I mean, there's a ton. I mean, we're, we're absolute worth balls. We're on two tours at the same time. Yeah. I don't know. That was, <laughs> nights was happening. So we're a part of that. And then with great church clothes. And so the craziness that happened was, uh, I was in on elevation nights in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I think you were in Oklahoma city and we're supposed to fly over and I was, we're, uh, a group of us were going to go over to the other tour and our flight deck canceled like yeah. that night because of weather. And so we had to leave the Elevation Nights tour in the middle. Oh, sorry. Um, leave the Elevation Nights tour in the middle of the middle of the show and then drive to Indianapolis, which is like three hours away. And then yeah. fly like, 
And we were four o'clock in the morning to like De- Denver, and then somehow like drive like it was like chaos, and we got <laughs> here on time. And they had to end up going to Toronto, and so I think it was the craziness of us doing two different shows. But like with Toronto, it was just like well, certain people didn't have passports, and so we had to swap in the middle of it, and wow. it was kind of chaotic. But it it was actually like funny. <laughs> I sure. what, was, what else can you do? <laughs> I was like, what else can you do? But just laugh, at like. Them. <laughs> just to go, we were at a, doing an arena tour and everyone's been here prepping all day. And I, and it is six o'clock. We have a seven o'clock start time for rhythm. And Josh is walking into the arena with his bags. <laughs> like, just, like, let's go to show no glow city. And I'm all, I'm here in Toronto, like in a different yeah. country. It was crazy. But, and you don't realize it until after. Cause it's, we're just like locked in. We're like, oh yeah, this is what we do. And we're having the time of our life. Like, yeah. It's so fun. I was telling someone, they're like, how do you guys do? Are you guys tired? I was like, nah, we're having the time of our life. Like. In two years yeah. from now, we'll probably th- think about how crazy this was, but right, right now, we're just like in it. We're understanding that uh, Elevation Rhythm is an Elevation Church, is an Elevation Worship. Like, we yeah. still have a lot of grinding and a lot of growing. People are still finding out about it. Yeah. yeah. And so we don't assume that, like, oh, y'all know who Rhythm is because we got Elevation. And so right. we'll have the time of our life uh, building this ministry and, like, not not like taking it for granted. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. As always, just head on over to Instagram, shoot us a DM. We would love to connect with you. God bless you today.